All right, so we should bring up to the stage a very, very special guest. I want you to, to give a round of applause for Monty Cox, who is the owner of Typhoon. Typhoon's one and only acting credit? Uh, no, Boone's done a lot of different stuff. Uh, he did uh, three or four or five different movies. None of them are viable. <laughs> uh, this was a character of the baboon. These particular baboons are him, it's a hemodryas, and they are volatile, beyond volatile. If I had him in here, I could bring him in here and have him sit next to me and he could look at you and I'll be fine. If one of you yawned, Tear your lips off. <laughs> yawn in their language is a challenge. So anytime you yawn, like when you work and I say you get tired, don't yawn. Don't yawn. And you have to yawn, you're gonna get in deep trouble. So bottom line is you don't yawn. The eyebrows, you see him doing that, that means I'm gonna eat your ass. <laughs> Ass. <laughs> so, so how did you how did you come to own such a charming animal? What, what was the what was what was the reasoning behind um, having this animal be a part of your life? If it was so volatile, if you knew it was so volatile. Well, it's like having a woman. You don't know what killers they are until you actually have them. <laughs> I got Boone and his little baby, and I'd work gorillas and chimps and orangutans, and I'd never work a baboon. And I knew they were very volatile and I'm high energy, and I'm a runner, and I run five miles every day. So that baboon ran every day of his life five miles or more. And they had that energy. But when I got him, he was like that big, so he wasn't quite as nasty as he was. But as there, what happens in the animal world, when they're young, they're sweet. It's like babies are sweet. As they get older and they become mature, they're, in our language, we call it their balls drop. And they're <laughs> tough boys. And all of a sudden, if you watch the movies, you saw the seventh time, you see a giant woody. Whoa, <laughs> watch, we watch that thing, and if I see him getting a woody, I go, I'm in trouble. <laughs> because that means he's getting his balls up to fight. So that's what happens with them. And they're such extreme animals, their emotions are on a thread. Like if I run with him, I'll stop two and a half miles, three miles up, and I'll be sitting. And he'll be sitting on the hillside above me, eight, ten feet. And he'll look down, bingo. <laughs> you look awfully small down there. I think he'll come kick your ass. <laughs> and if I get up and move on, it could be a lot gone. But if I stayed there, he'd attack me. It's just the nature of the beast. So you shut him on and off. Jerry actually worked the show. I didn't actually work him on it. The guy who I trained. And when working on the show, he would simply build him up to the level that he wanted to get him violent. So all he'd have to do is say, hey, boom. And boom, look, are you talking to me? And then he'd say, I'll kick your ass. And he'd turn around and run behind a door. And the baboon would do everything he can to get in there and kick his ass. <laughs> How do you calm it down? <laughs> and does it just kind of lose interest? The crew hides? <laughs> no, you, you calm it down kind of by your body position, by your movement. Like if I, if I build him up to that level and he can't get a little pause on me, it's heat in me, then if I, when I start to calm him down, if I change my body position, instead of being big and powerful, I go, it's okay, it's all right, and then kneel down, say, come over, you'll come over up and down in motion. And you have to kind of think of it in this world. They have big teeth and they have big fans. And if they actually go so far among themselves in the baboon world as to fight, one of them is going to get seriously hurt or crippled. So a lot of that emotional peace is built up to the point of, like, you see him going, ah, I'll eat your ass. And he's saying, this is what I'll hurt you with. Don't screw with me. And then if it continues, they go on. But even when they do battle, it's not, it 
it's not only an extremely violent thing because it would literally, what they do is, he weighs like 45 pounds, and if he comes flying through the air, he would hit you like this, his fangs were like that long, and if he held on, he'd just tear that muscle out on him. So it wouldn't work anymore. So in their world, if he goes to war with a baboon, another one, if they fight, they have big problems because somebody's going to be hurt. In the filming of the scenes that he's in the movie when he's going crazy, as, as you mentioned, was the crew behind a wall or a sheet of plastic or anything that would protect them from the baboon suddenly turning around and going, ah, at the crew? Well, that's a good point. Animals displace a lot. That means that what happens is if you're working an animal and that animal can't get out, wants to eat your face, and it can't get out, you might turn around and go, Hey, hey, I'll eat your face. <laughs> <laughs> I'd be scared shitless if I was on that crew. Yeah, you <laughs> should be. That's right. You should be. So what they, what they do is they cage the camera or they put a remote camera on it. So if the guy is in a room and you have the camera outside and it might even be motor driven and it has to move or just be locked off. But nobody, when booms build up that high, you couldn't get a cameraman in there, trust me. <laughs> So I'd, I'd heard a rumor before that maybe there was a female baboon behind some of those doors that it was trying to get through. It was really just the trainer going that, uh, and then rang off and behind the door. Yeah, no female baboon. Uh, Boone didn't care about female baboons. It just didn't. I put it with females. So I figured I'd get a baby. He just wasn't interested in female baboons. He was just interested in kicking ass. Like <laughs> 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 You mentioned working with other uh, primates. Was this a, a hobby of yours, or was, is this, was this a business of yours? No, I train all this stuff for the movies. So, uh, I, I trained sickly and always lions and tigers. I had the Exxon tigers, I did General Ben, and I trained the bear. So I've worked in this business all my life. And the interesting part of it is that all the different animals have different minds and different hearts. And a lot, you'll learn a lot from, like, Baboon, we didn't see it much in this, but a lot of times when he's sitting there, we're training him. He sits steady, like he did, God, what did he do? 35 different behaviors. Stick your tongue out, lie down your left, lie down your right, turn around, jump up, jump on. 35 different, as fast as you can say it, he'd do them. But when pressure get on him, he'd, he'd shake. And he's throwing off the emotion. He's going, nah, don't eat the guy yet. He's not quite that bad. <laughs> so my lion does the same thing, but I had never been able to figure out why the head shape, why that shape, is how they get rid of emotion so they don't get rid of that behavior. Uh, I mean, is the baboon still alive currently? No, it's actually, the baboon died about five years ago, and actually, he was up in Canada with Jerry, my trainer, and I got this email uh, that said lost, and I went, what is that? So I. I emailed him back, what does lost mean? What is that? Nothing. And I waited for a couple of days and I phoned his wife. And I said, where's Jerry? He said, he's lost and locked himself in the barn. He's been there for three days or four days now. Boone died and he's broken. And I went, shit. So I jumped in a plane and flew up there. And he was still in the barn when I got there. He was just crushed. And we went out and we did the guy thing and Boone went over him and did the deal, but it was, it's a heartbreaker because he was only 25. He should have lived to 35 or 40. And he, why he died, I did not talk to him. We didn't bother with that because he's gone, he's gone, he's gone. But Jerry should have been able, and I should have been able to enjoy him for another 20 years of his life. And he'd gone past the violent stage, just like when you're young, when I was at 16, 18, 20, 25, 30 years old, you kick some ass, great, point me at him, bring it on, big boy. He had people, he mellowed out. Well, Boone was mellowed out by then. So he was in a great place. He was with you all the time. He wasn't always going off. And at that point in time is when he finally passed away. So, yeah, he's gone. Do you consider this movie, Chakra, to be a fitting tribute to him? Or is it just this crazy piece of schlocking insanity that he happens to be the star of? Yeah, it's actually a very good question. Uh, <laughs> I, I, I think it's a, I think it's a, you know, it's like one of those cult movies, it's a great movie, like the Pulse thing, like you said, was very funny. 
and the fact that Boone kills them all. But to me, yeah, it's kind of one of the best things he did in that it really gives you a look at the um, at the emotions of that kind of animal. Now, bear in mind, you see him go off and try to kill people and, and hit the doors, and I mean, he's gone. But when that starts over, it's come over here, he jumps up in your arms and he sits there. He grooms you and so it's sweet. So he, he was an animal that didn't, some of the animals, when you bring them up to that emotional level, uh, you bring them up so they'll do what you saw. And some of them, very few, but some of them will be like, it's a game. So they'll ready to do that whole thing, but you'll snap your fingers and it's done. He never realized it was a game. If he'd build himself up to there, you would really have to fix him then. You'd have to say, I gotta give him a break, and I'll tell him it's okay. You sit in your arms and go, what did you want? What did you want? What are we doing? What? So what you're doing when he's hitting the door and going off, you say, good, good. You're trying to transfer the fact that it's really a trained behavior. It's not an emotional piece. But he never quite really picked up on that. So he was, it was kind of hard being a dog and it was kind of emotionally painful for the trainer because you build him up that high and it kind of knocked that fear because you see him when he comes back down, it's a little, it's a little hard on him. So it's kind of a, an emotional piece for the trainer and the animal, really. Uh, normally when, uh, when film shoots have animals as, as cast members, there might be multiple animals that are portraying the same character. Uh, were there any moments during the making of Shakla where he didn't want to work and had to just do something else for days until he got in the mood to work? Or was he was he a hard worker, ready to do anything? <laughs> Good question. He uh, Boone always worked. Any animal that's very well trained will always work. And I say that because you put them in the emotional state that you want them to work. If I have a lion, let's say I'm working a lion on set, and I build him up to an emotional piece where he doesn't want to have to kill somebody, so I want him back going through the whole thing. I still, if I'm good, will have the ability to bring that lion down. So I might, I might say, give me 15, 20 minutes, I'm gonna spend some time. And I'll sit, and I might play classical music, or I might have him sit with uh, my girlfriend, have her pet him, and sing to him and softly. All that emotion drops away. So you can always bring them down if you know what you're doing. I've never had an animal that's gone up and I can't bring back down. Where did you develop the skills to do this with so many different members of the animal kingdom? Is this something that you grew up with? Or did you uh, decide that that was your calling one day? If that's what I'm going to do. Ah, God, you guys are going to love the story. You like something? <laughs> you are going to love the story. <laughs> Sit back and enjoy this. It's a real true story. I told, you know, anybody know who John Millius is? Yeah. All right, well, Millius is a friend of mine. And I had, uh, I had lunch with Millius about a year, year and a half ago. And Millius is saying, Monty, I said, I never really asked you how you got in the business. And I told him the same thing. He said, I don't really like, you don't like this, John. Mm -hmm. And what happened is I was, I was like 22, 23, I think. And it was a time of LSD. <laughs> my dad came up from Reno to visit, we're in Los Angeles, dropped some acid, and we are fucked up. That's <laughs> one of the best dads. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay. So he's reading the paper, we are fucked up. <laughs> they have an ad that says, wanted, people can do fight scenes with lions and tigers for motion pictures. <laughs> And my dad says, let's go give that a shot. <laughs> what, 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 what profession was he normally? Well, my dad was uh, actually, it was a, uh, <laughs> he was a merchant marine for years, and then he owned the Earth and Marine Dance Studio, Studio in Reno, Nevada. But he would think about me going in there for the interview. So I just kind of let it slide, it sounds like fun. Well, about three in the morning he goes, you know, I think I'll straight again. Let's drop another cap. And I went, hey! <laughs> Fire another cap, got an hour interstellar, right? <laughs> Eight o'clock comes around, my dad says, let's go. I said, where? He's for the interview. <laughs> Are you out of your fucking mind? I, said, I, I can hardly walk. He said, perfect. We'll really have fun with <laughs> You're right, we will. <laughs> so we drove out. It was about. 
five minutes when we were to ask the USA. It's where the Tony Duck Toy in Calgary happens. And, and we walk in, there's like 20, 30 people seated there um, interviewing for the job. And they had a secretary. As you walk in the door, everybody's sitting over here. The secretary, the interviewer is here. And then there's a four or five feet behind her, and there's a wall of clearance across that lane, Judy Chin, and all that kind of she has me come in and I sit down to talk to her. My dad, with his sense of humor, walks around behind her, acting like he's looking at the pictures, but he's not. He's over her shoulder going, making faces at me, pulling his teeth, doing everything he can to make me crack up. Well, I'm locked on to her, so I don't, because once I start laughing, I'm gone, right? So this goes on for like five minutes, and she says, you know, I'm going to take you in the head of everybody else because you have this unbelievable ability to concentrate. <laughs> and that's what I got me once. I'm like, great. <laughs> <laughs> so he went into the office in the back where Ralph Telford rode the place. Well, he said, well, you're a skydiver and a martial artist and a professional scuba diver and yucky yucka. So you seem like you got caught. How big the balls do you have? <laughs> Will you walk in with lions and tigers and all that? Well, see, he said, well, follow me. We walked outside and they had an arena and had five lions, two tigers, two leopards, and two jaguars in it. Where was this? Like, on this was on Soledad Canyon, out off of 14. Okay. And it was what they were telling me, Dr. Tari in Calvary, Africa. So he walked over there and his wife is in there and she's surrounded by two giant trainers, you know, with sticks and all sorts of stuff to make sure nothing goes near her. And she's standing in there and she looks past them to me and goes, do you think you can do this? Well, I'm so fucked up, I could have flown in there. <laughs> I'm like, yeah, let me in. So I they opened the door, and I went in, and walked in there, and I'm standing around, all the cats were rubbing against me, and I'm like, this is boring, let's have fun. So I started running around the arena. <laughs> all the lions and tigers were <coughs> jumping over me, jumping up, like hitting me in the shoulders, knocking me against the side of the cage. They're freaking. My God, no, no, get out, get out. I said, fuck, no, I'm having fun. <laughs> <laughs> they grabbed Tony and drug her out. They dragged mine out. And he said, well, you're a fucking nutcase, but you're hired. <laughs> John Milius was friends with the guy who owned a crazy baboon. <laughs> um, I mean, I guess I'm all curious, uh, what are some other movies we could see this little guy in? God, I'm terrible for me shows. He was in, uh, uh, he starred in a movie like that when he was younger. He played a little ninja. <laughs> the Masked Man in the Devil's Gold was in here with that. And then he was in a movie with Jeff Goldblum where he... <laughs> was he in The Fly? Say it again? Was he in The Fly? Yeah! Oh, yeah. 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 Now, if you remember it in that, remember he was in The Pod? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's a way more fitting tribute to him than this. <laughs> <laughs> Type of work. You see him sitting there, and then you see Jerry cue him, and he jumps into Gold Bloom's arm. Yeah. And he's very friendly in that movie. Pardon me? He's very friendly in that movie. Very friendly, yeah. As long as Jeff doesn't yawn, he's fine. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, are there any other memories of him that you want to share? As we do, we uh, do have to bring this to a close as much as I could keep asking questions all night. Are there any other memories of him that you want to share that maybe? Art on screen of the him doing something unexpected for for a baboon. Oh, I'll give you a, a good one of him. I had I lost a kneecap. I had uh, had an altercation with a couple of lions and they won. So I had my knee operated on, and so I'm limping really bad. I can't move around that well. I miss the animal, but you can't take a lion or a tiger out when you got a, a big limp going. And I thought I'll just go clean the cages and I'll take Bruno out. Because, you know, he's going to be cool, right? So the cages are lined up. I have lion, tiger, bear, black panther on each side. And I have these big 14-foot gates around the place. So you walk in through the gates. And I 
had the gate. When I walked in, I let the gate half open. The goons on the left. So I walked in. I said, "Hey, come on, guy. You can wander around with me while I clean up." He took one look at my knee and went, <laughs> "You're hurt. You're fucked." <laughs> and he threw a shoulder block into my shoulder. He got on my leg. And I'm like, oh, geez, that hurt. So I can't fight him. I got nothing going on. So I'm kind of crippled. So I keep, I turn around, go the other way, and he hits me again. And I figure, I'll just go out through the gate and close the gate, you know, and I'll be fine for a minute. Well, I started to walk out the gates, and he ran through that shoulder block. You see him doing to the door, into the gate. And now I'm locked in with him. It's funny in the movie. And I'm like, shit, what am I going to do? And I went, he hit me three or four times in the leg. I said, that's it, history. So I went over, threw the cage door open, threw a leash on my tiger and jumped my tiger out. Who looked at him went, fuck this, I'm out of here. Jumped out, pulled the door closed, and that was the end of that.